Hey guys, uh, I'm in a single player world right now in creative mode. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you something. So a little bit of backstory. Uh, as I I think I've mentioned several times, I don't know if I ever mentioned in a video, but um, I have been waiting to do any sort of heavy redstone work in um, on the server. Uh, I've been waiting for the 1.5 update because I know things are going to change. Um, but I kind of realized that, uh, number one, I'm bored out of my mind not doing any redstone work. Uh, number two, um, the only thing that's really going to change are things that are heavily dependent on, on uh, exact timing. Uh, which in 90% of the stuff I work on, <clears throat> exact timing isn't that important. And in fact, uh, in 1.5, the timing that I do use that's a little bit exact is probably only going to be improved. With that said, um, I wanted to show you something I've been working on over here. Um, now, as you know, in uh, on the server, I have an absolute ton of bones from fighting um, skeletons uh, while hunting wither skeletons. Now, the other thing I get, uh, as well as bones, of course, are arrows. So, um, as I mentioned before, when I was telling you guys about um, sort of the way I like to play is, uh, if I fill up a chest with redstone, it means I'm not using it enough. So I like to find ways to either waste it, you know, with my powered rails, or to use it uh, so that I don't have a full chest because you get so much of it. Um, so I thought, why don't I apply the same thing to all these arrows I keep getting? So I came up with the solution and I want to show it to you. Oops, here's the front. This is my gas trap. Uh, well, this is the one I came up with in uh, in creative mode. Um, the one in the actual server is actually way cooler. Let me just uh, very quickly um, replace these so it's a little bit nicer looking. Alright, I'll leave those. Okay, <clears throat> first and foremost uh, I'd like to say something. This is my favorite block in the game, hands down. Um, I hate glowstone, the way it looks in a base. I love the way it looks in the nether when it's hanging from the ceiling and stuff, but I hate, hate seeing it in uh, bases and stuff. I just think it looks so ugly, so I always use this for lighting um, if I can in my base, um, other than torches, which, uh, by the way, the base I currently have uh, on the server. Um, that base is temporary. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's it's my starter base. Uh, the one I actually build is going to be a little bit farther away from that location, and, and it's going to have a lot more stuff going on. Uh, anyway, let me just talk real quick. The reason this is such an amazing block, and uh, I just destroyed the, the little platform I had out here to demonstrate stuff, but uh, here's why it's my favorite block, um, among other things. You know, number one, I think it looks cool and stuff. Redstone, uh, and I could be wrong, I believe this is the only block that behaves this way. If there's another one, and you guys know of it, please let me know, uh, because um, there are a lot of great things about this block that I, I just love, and I'd love to know if there's other blocks to do this as well. When I light this block, as you can see, I'm powering this block, which is also powering this one. Now watch this. Now I'm powering this block, which powers this block. This block doesn't get powered. However, you can use this because it's actually becoming a different type of block. You can use it as a bud switch. Uh, uh, okay. Now let me <clears throat> let me start off by saying. Um, I have pretty extensive redstone knowledge, uh, but one thing I'm really bad at with redstone is 
naming or knowing the names of all the stuff. Like, I know how it works, but I don't really call things the right way. Um, like, you know, when you watch Alamantis, he talks about latches and uh, T flip flops and stuff. Uh, it's like, I know what, what they do, but I don't know them by name. Uh, I am assuming this is a, a block update detector or a blood, uh, a blood switch, a bud switch. Um, because of the way that it functions. So now, you'll notice I have these here. Now, on this world, it doesn't actually do anything. But, um, and originally I was going to build this thing from scratch on the server, but when I came up with the idea, I was extremely exhausted and didn't want to do a, a, a video. Uh, by the way, today is Sunday, and it is the final day of my project for this company in Australia. Um, the project is due Monday, Australia time, uh, which means I've got about, I don't know, 30 hours left on the project. Uh, oh, there goes Skype. <clears throat> Forgot to turn it off this time. Um, I've got about 30 hours left, and probably every second of that 30 hours is going to be spent rendering, but I am... I'm honestly very optimistic. I believe the project is going to be finished on time, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, anyway, so I was really exhausted when I when I hopped on the server, and I just, you know, I was waiting on renders and stuff, and I didn't really have anything else to do, so I actually built the majority of this in um, on the server already. Now, I'd like to start off by saying um, what this is, is you'll notice this is one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. This is five by five by one, two, three, four. Now that's five by five by four high. On the server, it's five by five by five high. Okay? Now I've read two separate uh, accounts about gas spawning conditions. One of them says five by four by five, and the other one says 5x5x5. Five by five by five. To be safe, on the server, I, I did a whole 5x5x5. Five by five by five. Okay? Now what this does, originally, just for the fun of it, I had dispensers literally covering the wall. So even up here, it would be dispenser, 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 all the way along the wall, and all the way along here, and all the way along here and utilizing um, this amazing ability with half slabs. I mean, I, I'm telling you, the only repeaters I had before were making it look like this um, so that, you know, you would make sure that it was going into the actual input. Uh, but I, I honestly, if, if the blocks operated the way, you know, if, if redstone worked better and didn't break the... Uh, connection like that, it, it would have worked um, perfectly the other way. But I, I want to show you real quick how how great half slabs are. All right, so here's an upside down half slab. Now, watch this. Redstone travels up um, half slabs. Hold on, I, I gotta test this before I make a fool of myself. But it does not travel down them, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, I guess yeah, like that. Well, <laughs> probably the worst block I can test with because of its unique properties. Yeah, so it doesn't pa travel down. Glowstone behaves exactly the same way. Um, so. It, if you were to put glowstone here, occupying this full area, and here, it would behave the same way. So it goes up. Let me show you it going up. <laughs> so you know I'm not full of crap. Actually, this needs to go here. See, it goes up, but it does not go down. So originally, oh, I shouldn't have deleted that. Uh, originally, using that, um, I could do this. Really? I could do this. And it would go here, here, here. And I used that, and I was able to wire very easily every single dispenser for this whole area. 
Now the problem with that, you know, because I was completely willing to go overkill to use up more redstone and also more arrows. Because um, obviously these are to shoot out arrows at the gas if it spawns in here. Now here's the problem with that though. For some reason, uh, when arrows shoot um, out of dispensers or whatever, it seemed as though when the gas was in here, well, I don't want to do it now because it's not the same setup, but when the gas was in here, uh, it and originally the uh, the entire floor was pressure plates. That was the first design. And the pressure plates had, and I, I used water to get rid of it, but um, there was just um, directly underneath it, similar to, it was on this level, it was just um, redstone everywhere. So stepping on a single one of these would cause... Um, the redstone to travel up the current, you know, uh, which this is remnant of the original design. So it'd go up, 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 and it would it would power every single one of these dispensers and shoot arrows at at the uh, at the gas that was in here. Now the problem with that is that um, for some reason, and I think it's kind of like in you know like in early video games when you'd get hit by something and you'd have temporary invulnerability, where like your sprite, your character sprite would flash or whatever. Um, that's basically what was happening in this situation. So the ghast was only actually being hit by one arrow, and I don't think I need to explain that, well, you know, let's just do the math real quick. So we had one, two, three, four. We had four <clears throat> by five, that's 20. So we had um, 60 dispensers. That means 60 arrows hitting this ghast, technically, but it seemed as though only one arrow was actually hitting him because for some reason he would not die. So what I ended up doing, um, I put all of these guys on a delay. So it goes zero delay, one, two, three, four, okay? And then, you know, zero, um, one, two, three, four, five. So this would be five. So it goes four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, you know, and then this would be well, back before I switch those back up, it would be 10, 11, you know, whatever, all the way to 15. So it shoots the arrows out um, like that. And honestly, if I remember correctly, it actually only takes four arrows from a dispenser to kill a ghast. But I just thought, you know, I wanted to do it this way, because like I said, I wanted to do it in excess to use up my arrows. Anyway, what these pressure plates are currently for is when you step on them, it pushes up. Oh, not anymore. None of these are going to work? Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> you'll see in a minute on the server what they do. Uh, when you step on here, by the way, that's a redstone lamp. Um, and again, favorite block in the game. So let's see. Oh, here's why it's not working. Redstone lamp here. And like I said, this is one of the only blocks that can do this because of its bud switch capability. All right, so um, I'm not going to, well, I guess I could. Here we go. <clears throat> Get rid of that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy, and that guy. Okay, so now it's going to work. So watch this. So I hit that tripwire. Um and it caused the arrows to shoot because of the way I rewired it. Oops, I'm not flying. There we go. So it goes tripwire, and then it just goes down and around. And, and you know, there's a bunch of stuff here. These are just residual stuff from tests I did. Um, so now this is kind of annoying, yeah? Because what it's doing is it's pushing me up. I'm going off the pressure plate. Then it's dropping me down. I'm landing on the pressure plate. So this button here, which doesn't do anything on here, it... it Actually, on the server, it uses this to activate a T flip flop, which pulls these pistons, uh, or which pulls using pistons, it pulls down these extra lamps so that they can't be used as a bud switch. So that when you stand on on them, instead of doing that, it'll do this. So it doesn't actually activate them like that. Okay, uh, and I'll show you that on the server as soon as I hop on. Anyway. Um, now let's put that back, uh, and again, this was the original design. The one on the server is very different now. I mean, it looks very similar, but but there's some new functionality added. 
Um, so I'm going to spawn a gas. I'm going to break that. Uh, the one on the server... Oh, jeez. The one on the server is essentially a reversed version of this. The one in the middle here would be an iron block. And all the iron... Okay, so basically all the places where the pressure plates are currently at Imagine that those are the iron blocks, and um, the iron blocks are all the redstone uh, lamps with the pressure plates on them. Um, so now, if I spawn a gas right in the middle, and of course because I rewired these, <laughs> he didn't get killed. Oh, you know what? No, I only put arrows in. Uh, I can't remember. I might have put them in all of them. Uh, I just replaced them on the on the server differently, so... Let's just fix these. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there aren't any arrows in there. Uh, it really doesn't matter, though. So basically, that's what I, I wanted to demonstrate. And then I have a button on the server. You know what? Let's just go to the server. Screw this. Okay. So here we are on the server. Now, I have a button here that activates, you know, uh, just that portion, um, so that if something like, let's say, a zombie pigman or something is in there, uh, you could use that to just get him out of there real quick. And you'll notice uh, the ground is different, like I said. Um, let me check this real quick. All right, so I'm going to use that. So you understand what's going on? So I press it again. Now I can walk, and it won't be annoying like that. Um, and then I've already showed you the, that. Um, you know, I, I, need, I really need to find out for sure if gas need a 5x5x5 five by five by five area. Because I do have, uh, uh, at the moment, I do have steps here, um, upside down stairs. And I, I, I would hate for that to prevent them from spawning. Now... Um, I know what you're thinking. How do I even get a gas to spawn in here? Well, the truth is, um, the reason... Well, first of all, I had planned on... Uh, let's see, I guess you need probably up to 128 blocks around in every direction. Uh, I was going to prevent any spawnable places outside there. And then because I'm using half slabs here, the only place that any mob could spawn um, theoretically around my base would be here, 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 and any of the blocks in here. Okay? So, obviously I'm going to get zombie pigmen spawning here, uh, and I'll probably end up doing something um, about that, you know, when if it gets annoying. Uh, by the way, this staircase doesn't go anywhere. I'm just trying to figure out a way to link what was going to be the gas trap and a much more efficient gold farm over here. Similar to the one I have over at the Nether Hub, but exceptionally more efficient. Uh, by the way, I came in here while, uh, while I was building this, and uh, there were two zombies in here. Um, oh, you know what? i got to tell another story first. See this hole right here? Uh, by the way, I, I broke out both of the uh, sand generators, so, um, but that's where they used to be. This is where my, my portal used to be, was down here. Um, so, a ghast had spawned in there, and by the way, originally, this was fully netherrack. There was no way for it to see me, um, and this wasn't here. This was still netherrack, you know, it was all completely sealed. I was standing here chatting with Alamantis uh, over, you know, chat, and... All of a sudden, like a machine gun, I just hear this gas going crazy. And piece by piece, he just, he punched through like five layers of netherrack uh, to get through to me. It was ridiculous. i would never seen a gas behave that way. Um, but, uh, so there was this opening here. And I, I came in here one time, and uh, there were two zombies in here. Similar to how the creepers keep blowing me up as they come through. Um, one of the zombies was uh, an infected villager. So I immediately ran back home, grabbed the ingredients I would need, 
and I converted him, and then he had, uh, I started trading with him once he had converted in here, and one of his trades was uh, diamond, um, it was like a couple emeralds for a diamond sword, and you know, as I had mentioned earlier, I wanted to have a row of uh, villagers that had trades that would give me diamond tools. Because um, I don't want to have to waste diamond on anything but anvil uh, repairs. So, I was really excited. And right as I was um, about to, like, you know, text chat somebody or... I don't remember what I was doing, but I was... Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Here's what happened. Oh, man. I remember now. Okay, so the... Uh, <laughs> the zombie villager, I converted him. And then he started following me. And I went all the way over to the nether hub. Uh, because my um, my minecart wasn't here. Because uh, in in an earlier episode, you remember T. Calhoun and I rode it over there because I was going to R. Stong's base. But then I remembered that that wasn't the direction to R. Stong's base. Um, because we don't have a path to his base from the hub yet. So we ended up walking from T. Calhoun's base to Inverted Shadow's base to R. Stong's base. And then from R. Stong's base, I said goodbye to T. Calhoun and I went around and came back out here. Um, so my, my minecart was still um, over at the nether hub. Uh, anyway, um, I got it to follow me, um, and I pushed him into the minecart and sent it this way. And by the way, he was converting the whole time. And uh, Etho had mentioned in one of his videos that um, when they convert into villagers, they come out of the minecart. Well, if the minecart is moving, once they convert, they'll immediately be sucked back into it. So it's like, um, if, if the minecart is continuously moving, you don't have to worry about that. And it got all the way over here. But, you know, there is a problem when you log out uh, or unload chunks. Uh, they will come out of minecarts. Any, any entity will. Um, so he came over here, and I, I had him waiting here, and I started trading with him, and I was really excited. And I, uh, I think I, I left the nether to get some items, uh, you know, blocked or something so I could protect him using, um, I don't know, fences or some crap like that. I, I just wanted to use to build something that I could pen him in, um, until I knew what to do with him. And I come back in and this is what I see. Here he is sitting in the minecart. I come through there and this is what he does. Dead. Just dead. That would have been way cooler if I had, <laughs> if that had worked the way I had planned. Um, and I hadn't stopped on the way down, but, uh, but basically, yeah, he, he just died as, as quickly as he came, he was gone. Um, and I've been having some, uh, weird occurrences in the nether. Um, hold on, let me get back out of here. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm kind of bummed. Uh, you, you might start to recognize this. I used, to, well, I don't know if I ever showed it in videos, but I used to fight zombie pigmen up here. Uh, and occasionally a ghast would spawn up here, which was always fun. Uh, I hate to I hate to fill this in, but I'm gonna have to because I, I want to improve my rates. You know, this gold farm is gonna be incredible. Um, I've I've learned from the mistakes of the previous gold farm, um, which by the way was the first gold farm I've ever built, um, and I've got a new one that my goodness, it's gonna be incredible. Uh, oh. The rates are, are going to just be un, unbelievable if I, if I you know, do a thorough job getting rid of all the uh, spawnable areas. Um, and the way it's going to be incredible is that uh, the one over by the nether hub, the spawn pads start above the bedrock. For this one, the spawn pads are going to go all the way down to bedrock all the way up either to or even above the bedrock over here and uh, that's actually why there's a hole here um, I'm gonna have some fun today because what I'm going to do is um, first of all let me show you uh, you know what let me try to do this without falling in there awesome okay so I just want to show you guys real quick um, these are the pistons right here that push the redstone lamps up so that they can be treated as a um, bud switch to let these pistons activate. Um, when No, I can't get out of here. 
when the uh, when the T flip flop over here, and I guess I do. I guess I do have a a pretty firm grasp on what some things are called apparently. Uh, and I realized uh, watching another video somebody had done that uh, there's a much more efficient way to do a uh, a T flip flop. Um, saves a little bit of resources, um, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, I don't, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, this isn't exactly it, but hold on. We'll get there. I'll get rid of you. All right. There we go. So that's a much more efficient way to do it. Um, it's not really much more, but it is... It is a tad bit more efficient. Man, I wish I had a stack of uh, nether rack with me. I've been I've already used up almost my entire supply. Or I, I did use up my entire supply that I hold at my base. Um, so I've been dipping into the supply that's at the uh, nether hub um, from when I mined out that whole area for the nether hub. Um, and, you know, because I'm filling in these enormous uh, areas um, so that absolutely nothing can spawn there. Um, anyway, by the way, I went into, I, I copied the, the server, uh, world, uh, on my desktop where I host it, and, uh, I went into creative mode on, on a single player version of it, um, and, or actually I went into MC at it first, and I, I removed every single block from the nether whatsoever, except for this area, so that, uh, and I switched, uh, the ceiling up here to bedrock, which is a block mobs cannot spawn on and anything else that I could where where any sort of mob could spawn I switched it to bedrock because one of the great things about bedrock not that it helps you in survival mode um, but one of the great things about bedrock is that it's one of the only blocks that mobs cannot spawn on that um, does not produce light uh, and um, redstone can go on top of uh, so that's that's fantastic. And in fact, it's the only block, uh, to my knowledge, that you can put redstone on top of that will completely prevent mobs that don't require light um, that that can spawn regardless of light level. So, um, so I switched that that area up to to bedrock, and uh, I made it so that this was literally like I was in creative mode, so I had to fly because there was literally nowhere to stand whatsoever other than the oh, I'm trying to fly right now I'm in survival mode on the server um, so I would be flying because there's literally no place for anything to stand except for in this spawn pad uh, and of course lots of zombie pigmen would spawn I never ever got a gas to spawn unfortunately um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to uh, provoke that um, let's see okay um, all right, I have something really fun planned, and but first I want to get some water from the nether. You know what? I'm going to be a good sport about it, too. I do have one ice block in here. Uh, you know what, guys? Actually, I'm going to cut when I get there. Save you guys some time, because this episode is already getting kind of long. All right, I'll see you there. Okay, guys, we're here. <clears throat> All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Take one of those and get rid of any of that crap that might be in my inventory. And then, because I took one, see, I'm going to toss that in the fire. Alright. Very good. <clears throat> and, uh, while I'm here, I'm going to grab some more nether rack. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Who knew that would have been worse than me holding the, uh, <laughs> than if I had been holding the flint and steel at that moment. It wouldn't have caused any problems if it had been the flint and steel, I don't think. Alright, so we got, got another rack. Of course, I'm going to get that one that was in here if I can. Okay, whatever. Okay, so we're going to take the minecart back, assuming it's there. Um, I had an issue where I accidentally bumped it. Uh, when I was trying to help the uh, the villager, and um, 
you know, like when I ran after him because I didn't want him to, to leap to his death like he did. Anyway, uh, I bumped it and it got sent back this way. This, I wanted to see this before with that. Um, I don't have to see fast. Um, the last time I tried to do this, uh, I ran into a part where my, um, my rail was missing. So, uh, to explain the gold farm, uh, this is what is going to be going on. It's going to be enormous, and the reason it's going to be more efficient, uh, first and foremost, is, is for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, uh, potentially, well, uh, I, guess it's, I guess it's pretty unlikely. If I was to put it on this side, it'd be more likely, um, but uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, I was thinking that potentially um, Pecos, because his base is in this direction, uh, it's actually more probably right there, um, but uh, I was thinking that when Pecos was online uh, in the nether, it might even produce more results for me, um, but probably not very many. But the reason this is going to be efficient is because as I stand here, mobs underneath me, in, you know, where the spawn pads are going to be, and also above me. Are, are going to be able to spawn, so it's going to be at least double the efficiency of the one at the nether hub. Uh, now, I've been, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and, but I held off because I wanted to do it while I was recording for you guys. So this is this is uh, a bomb drop. Oh man, I hope I don't hit those repeaters. Oh, thank goodness. It's one of the most fun things to do, in my opinion. Um, now, in all honesty, I'm going to have to fill this whole thing up, but I just want to get down to bedrock, and this is the most fun way to do it. It's also safer than going down there in case there's lava. You know, or giant holes where I would end up digging straight down. And now, this is a kind of uh, unfortunate, because what I'm doing here... Um, which this is something that you don't really want to do on the surface because you could end up blowing up valuable resources like diamond. Um, but what I'm doing here, um, I'm actually losing most of the nether rack, I assume, um, because that nether rack is getting destroyed every time the next TNT comes down. So it's probably not all that useful. Man, I hope I have enough. Uh, eventually, I will get to the point, because I am at Y91, uh, I think. Uh, I will get to the point where it'll probably start blowing up before it reaches the bottom. Um, when I attempted, attempted to do this in, in uh, single player in creative mode, um, I had some really strange results where um, it would go down there, but nothing would blow up. But if you were to stand down there and right-click on a block, it would disappear. Yeah, I think I'm at that threshold right now. All right, so let's... Uh, Try to lower this down. Let's take that with us. And put this here. Oh god, dead. Oh man. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, there's a villager in here who there's no lighting in there, so he might die. I don't know, but who cares? Uh, he trades um, a diamond pick with some emeralds for a enchanted diamond pick with fortune one um so you could even trade him one where oh, i don't have any on me but uh you could even trade him a diamond pick that was um uh almost like you know basically one hit away from from being completely gone uh and he'll give you a brand new one with the enchantment on it uh, and the reason i'm keeping that guy uh, at the moment is because potentially it could be helpful to have um, in case I you know it's easier to just take three near dead picks and um, and get them to um, basically uh, no the water's pushing me um, to take three near dead picks and get fortune on them that's something I could craft uh, combine in an anvil uh, and get fortune three so you know it's just one of those things well actually I don't it might be a little bit more difficult than that. Because, uh, yeah, Fortune 1 and Fortune 1 will give you Fortune 2. But I don't think Fortune 2 and Fortune 1 will give you Fortune 3. 
Oh my gosh, why didn't I put those in the chest up there? Oh jeez. Okay, I, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna cut it here and put these up there. I want to try to make cut out as much as I can from this episode. All right, see. So yeah. Something I hadn't actually considered uh, when doing this because I thought this was gonna be a waste. Um, you know, because uh, all it was getting me was down to bedrock in the most fun way. Uh, but actually, it's kind of helpful in, in a way. Um, because uh, it sort of reveals openings, uh, the kind that I have to fill up. Uh, the ones specifically that are right around my, um, my farm. So that's actually good. Here, I'll show you some of the tunnels. Like, there's one right there that I'll end up filling up, like, completely fill it uh, with junk. So, all right, so um, now, okay, I need to figure out how I'm going to do this. I guess probably the best way to do this is to go like this, and then go like this. I fully expect to, to accidentally break my platform the first attempt at this. Okay, we're going to stop the water. Okay. And then I guess I'll try to dig down as far as I can. All right, so let's try to dig down a little bit. Yeah, that's what I thought, like two blocks. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, though. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to put this here. We're going to hope it doesn't get destroyed by the first blast, even though it probably will. You know, here's what... Oh, no! No, why didn't I think of that? It needs a guide. <laughs> no! Oh, I lost my redstone torch, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. Thank goodness. Whew! All right, let's, <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> I like to think that even the most experienced Minecraft players have days like this. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again. Alright, so, I need you, you, you. I'm getting a little bit ballsier right now, that's for sure. Um, first things first, we'll do that, and then... I want to dig down so I'll fall farther. Because right. right now we are at Y20. And we are very close. And I'm going to have some TNT left over, I hope. Ooh. Eh, it doesn't matter so much anymore. I'm going to rebuild it anyway. <laughs> Yay, we made it. All right. So. Yay. Okay, so guys, from... Oh. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so from here, and uh, yeah, I'm going to take MC Edit and break it down so I'm at the very lowest level, because right now I'm at two, and yes, I'd like to be at one. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to put an item elevator here, okay? Um, and that item elevator is going to push the gold and gold swords, gold ingots, you know, um, and uh, rotten flesh. It's going to push it from the farm all the way up. And what this is, the, the great thing about Minecraft chunks is that vertically they're the entire realm. So uh, even if mobs are spawning lower and they're not really moving, which I'm probably going to use uh, Seth Bling's um, style of, uh, of mob system where you can press a button and it'll activate water, um, which I can't do it his way with the buckets because I'm in the nether. Uh, you know what, guys? Give me one second. Man, if I had uh, done this on the overworld, I would have surely died. <laughs> I didn't log out. Um, anyway... All right, so I'm back. Um, you know what? I was thinking... Originally I had mentioned... Oh, shoot, I should have logged out. Some of that some of that netherrack has certainly despawned. 
what I was thinking was that um, I would use Seth Bling's style um, where it, you know, you wire it up so that you can press a button and it'll push all the mobs um, will fall because of water pushing them. And like I said, I wouldn't be able to do it his way because I can't use buckets in a dispenser in the nether because the, the water will just evaporate. Um, like that. Uh, I actually had to empty my bucket so I could take this out when I get up there. Um, anyway. Um, but I actually realized that it's probably, even though it's going to be a lot, a lot more resources um, to do it another way, it's probably more efficient for me to do it like an Enderman farm style, uh, where as soon as a zombie pigman um, steps on, uh, like as soon as they spawn, they get pushed off with a um, pressure plate that pushes a piston and pushes them down to their death. Uh, that's going to probably end up being the most efficient way possible, but the only problem is it's going to be pretty noisy. Um, we're going to try it uh, because, you know, as I've shown you, I like to not be so frugal with my resources. I love to very greatly over overuse my amount of redstone and whatnot uh, because it ends up, um, in the long run, making the game more fun for me because I don't have chest after chest after chest filled with redstone um, and I, I don't know I just it, it makes me feel better about myself uh, so yeah we're, we're almost definitely gonna do that it's gonna take a ton of iron and one of the great things about it is that I can I can make a very quick version that'll be utilized and then after that um, I can use um, I can always add more and more and more and more pads to get a very efficient farm going Basically, what I want, and I'm going to do the same thing in the, in the end, which is another great place for this kind of thing um, uh, with an item elevator, uh, especially because in the end, um, you've got, like the nether, floor to ceiling, or ceiling to floor, floor to ceiling uh, space to create a farm where things are going to spawn basically everywhere, uh, and it's very efficient. And just imagine... Like, imagine this is the end and I walk in here, and all I gotta do is step over here, just briefly, I, I just walk over, you know, before I fall down there to my death, and have to take another trip back to the nether hub to get that water. Imagine this, alright? So you've just showed up in the end, you're on the obsidian platform, you walk to your left, bam, your entire inventory is completely filled with ender pearls. And you walk away, and there's still a ton left over. Um, I expect something very similar to, like that to happen with this gold farm, except that gold can stack, gold nuggets and, and stuff can stack up to 16, I'm uh, sorry, up to 64, whereas ender pearls can only stack up to 16, um, so your inventory won't, won't fill up as quickly, which is good. Um, and I'm also going to set up a clock. Alamantis had mentioned to me that probably the reason my, um, and I'm not OP right now, so I can't go into creative mode to change it, but... Alamantis had mentioned to me that um, probably the reason my uh, my command blocks didn't work the way I thought is that because I had the letters, I had the uh, the at symbol before the word uh, before the name Cypress. So it, um, he told me if I took that out, it would probably work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a clock um, that runs in a continuous motion, or you know, just going to continually. Um, it's just going to continually activate uh, a command block that will empty my inventory of rotten flesh, um, gold swords, and um, I guess that's technically all I need. Because um, that's two command blocks right there. And what that will basically do is I'll step into this area to pick up the gold. And any sort of rotten flesh or anything, as soon as I pick that up, it will immediately be removed from my inventory, opening up more space for um, for the gold nugget uh, and gold ingots. Uh, and actually, what I might do is instead of doing um, at Cypherus, uh, I might set it up so that any player who's standing exactly here, uh, 
you know, so I'll set up the radius to be just these couple blocks. Um, you know what? No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it a much wider one because I hate having gold swords and crap in my inventory, and it'll be great to just have it removed automatically without thinking about it anyway. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, I'm gonna do that, um, and I have to make sure it's player specific because I don't want to have another incident like with T. Calhoun when he was pranking me and he pushed that button and it removed the stone sword out of his hot bar because I didn't think anybody used stone swords after after they got very far and you know I actually use stone tools for a very long time like I basically skip iron um, the only time I ever take iron is to mine diamond to start using diamond um, and um, and also at times for uh, armor although I got this from trading with that villager uh, who I had gotten that minecart who, who commits suicide um, anyway so um, you know, I, I'm, I guess I'm going to call it an end right now. Um, I'm really excited about this plan. And uh, I'd love to see, like, you know, this whole ghast chamber right here. I know it's not very efficient. I know that ghasts are not going to spawn in here all the time, no matter what. Even if I fill in literally every space for anything to spawn except for gas, the only way... I could probably get a gas to spawn in here very often is if I use some sort of a mod that completely prevented zombie pigmen from spawning um, and magma cubes apparently because that would be another issue but um, because I like I said I went into creative mode on single player world uh, on a copy of this um, of our server and I had literally no spaces for anything to spawn except for this 5x5 five five area and I played for like two hours just flying around, getting things to despawn and respawn, and I never saw a single ghast. Um, so even when there's, when this is the most optimal place, uh, chances are a zombie pig man's gonna spawn here. That's just how things are. Um, so anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm gonna, I think I already showed this. I'm gonna push that so you can see the arrows. Um, now, this actually functions in a very interesting way. Um, I think it shoots out twice as many as it's supposed to. Um, let's uh, let's fill up everything with it with an arrow, um, so that we know. Um, I've got plenty. Lente. You gotta understand. You see these arrows here? It looks like I have a lot. Yeah. This is after giving m the majority of them from that one chest to um, Inverted Shadow. Uh, I have a ton in different locations where I just store them. That's why, that's the entire point of this thing existing. And I gotta be honest with you, I really liked the one that was an entire room full of arrows. But because of, like, I guess, temporary um, invulnerability... Uh, it ended up not being uh, very efficient at all um, because because it you know you really only use up one arrow at that point. Just want to make sure all of these have at least one. All right, cool. All right, so now we're gonna stand in a place where we won't get hit. All right, so uh, there's 15. So if I get 30 arrows. That means that it's shooting twice, which I, I definitely think it is. It sure feels like it is. Uh, I made sure I didn't get hit, which means that I won't have wasted one of those arrows for the count. So I've got eight. Now that's strange. If eight of them shot out here, that means that this definitely had to shoot more than just five. Oh yeah, 18, 24, 30. Yeah, so it does shoot them around twice. Um, I used to think this arrow here was hitting this button. This is a stone button. It shouldn't activate it. Uh, and, and if it was, then this arrow would also be hitting this button. And you'd hear... You'd hear all that noise going on. Um, so honestly, I have no idea what's causing it. 
Um, it's probably something to do with the way that uh, dispensers work. How they... Um, like, I guess it's almost as though... It's funny how this powers that one. Oh, that's so weird. I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you what's going on, but it is very strange. Um, I think it's because it powers them, and then I guess they shoot a second time when they're depowered or something. Because um, uh, sometimes dispensers work better if you have them constantly powered, and then a second input being powered will cause it to shoot. Uh, so I don't know. I really don't know. But uh shoots out 30 arrows each time, um, which is a pretty, pretty darn good number. Uh, I think you can imagine... I would have had uh, 120 before, um, which would have been more annoying than fun to waste those arrows because, you know, when you want to when you want to pick up those arrows from from an incident where let's say a, a zombie pigman comes in here and, and it, he get you know this pushes him up and then when he tries to walk off he jumps a little bit whoop, and causes that. Uh, it'd be really annoying every single time that happened to run in here pick up 120 arrows and have to go to each and every one of these and go click and then, oh, of course, it's, you know, it'd just, it'd just be so annoying. You have to go to literally every single one of them when they're completely filled. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, that's that. Uh, I need to call it an end. It's, it's been going way too long. All right, guys, take it easy. Uh, I'll see you next time.